Am I good? I think I'm good. Um, I'm gonna widen that shot. Ooh. Whoa, too much headroom. Let's fix that. That's good. I think we're good. We're good. I think we're good. So I was supposed to do a video this week on what's in my pack, um, but I'm changing it up this week and I'll explain why here in a second. What is up guys? I'm Andy Neal, Plus Size Hiker. Um, welcome to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram, all that fun stuff. Uh, this week I was supposed to do a video and I actually filmed the video. See a quick little snippet here. Um, there are situations where I would not bring all this stuff if it's a really familiar area um, in, in the city, around the city. Um, there, you know, there may be times where I'm not necessarily bringing all of this stuff. That's up to you. You wanna make sure you always have the 10 essentials about what's in my pack. Uh, I filmed it and I was gonna edit it today, but I decided to do something different. I'm not gonna have a script, I'm just gonna wing it and talk about my journey as a big and tall, husky, fat, plus size individual. Now, many of you may be asking why I'm doing this. Well, this week um, online, you may have seen uh, Vogue Business put out an article about um, plus size men in the fashion industry and how there's a desire for clothes, and especially higher end clothes and nicer clothes. And there's been a lot of good conversation happening online. I'm very thankful to be a part of that conversation. But also um, having gone viral on Instagram and TikTok last two weeks as a plus size fat individual myself who is advocating for outdoor inclusion, um, I have seen so much disparaging um, comments and I don't like responding to the comments. Um, I, can't e I can't even respond to the comments anymore because there's just, when you get to the point where the comments are just so many, you can't get to them and you can't respond. Even, even if you wanted to, one, two, I knew getting into this a long time ago when I started putting content out into the world that I need to have thick skin. People have always made comments about my body. I've always been a bigger guy and I just wanted to speak to that a little bit and speak to my journey because I want to talk a little bit more about the plus size Andy portion over the hiker part because I think, like I've talked about, I'm more than just a hiker, I'm more than just a plus size model, I'm more than just a Disney fan, uh, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I am a coffee snob, I'm all these things. Um, but I think this is a conversation that's really important. Now I go into this conversation knowing perfectly well, I am white, I am straight, I am middle class, I am formerly Protestant, um, I am cisgendered, I am able-bodied, um, I have privilege running out my ears. So I'm only gonna be talking about my experience as a plus size fat individual. Uh, the plus size fat community is not a monolith. Um, there are so many different experiences. I'm talking about my experience and I know many in the plus size fat, uh, fat and outdoorsy, hiking plus size, fashion, um, nerd and fandom plus size communities have had similar experiences. Um, but I'm telling my story as a plus size fat individual um, just maybe if you are plus size fat that you can hear that you're not alone or if maybe you're straight size, the term that we, we, we use um, in, in the plus size community, you're straight sized. Um, maybe you get a better perspective of where we're coming from um, because we all have our struggles and um, uh, this is, um, I, I don't see it so much as a struggle anymore, it's just who I am. I'm a plus size individual. So I've always been a big Guy. I was a bigger kid. I remember in my class, I was like the first kid to hit 100 pounds in PE when they used to weigh you and do the BMI stuff, which is freaking ridiculous. Don't get me started on BMI and how ridiculous of a metric BMI is. It just, oh, it ticks me off so stinking bad. Like, come on. So I've always been a big guy, even though I was super active. I played basketball in middle school. I played football in middle school. Um, and, and, and much of high school I ran, but I was always the bigger guy on there. I was, people were always surprised to see me out there running. I'd be pumping out six, seven, eight miles a day, and I was bigger than everybody else as a freshman, um, and I just enjoyed running. I enjoyed being out there, something I'm, I'm getting back into now, very much enjoy. Uh, and I remember just as, as a child and as a teenager being ridiculed about my size, you know, 
people always say, you're, you're, you know, you're so fat, you know, when you sit around the house, you sit around the house, or, you know, other stupid fat jokes that you'd get um, in the 90s. It was, yeah, it sucked. And there, there were so many times where you, you, you just absorb it, and you absorb it, and you absorb it, and you absorb it, and um, it was hard to find friends, especially growing up. Uh, in places around Los Angeles and Las Vegas, um, there there was just this air of body image that you had to live up to. That all these people you saw on the screen, um, on TV, uh, they looked a certain way, and being fat was bad. That was a bad thing, and you must be ridiculed for it. And I was. So many people didn't know is what I was going through at home, and I'm not going to get into my background um, growing up because you know that involves my family, and I just I want to keep that keep that private. Um, for me. I just, I, I had a toxic relationship with food. Food is what I relied on. Um, and so I would, you know, be big, I was a big guy and I'd be dealing with stuff going on with my family and being ridiculed at school for being a bigger guy. So I would turn to food and I would binge eat and then I feel horrible about binge eating. And this is, this is as a guy, you know, as, as a child and as a teenager in high school, these are things, you know, guys, especially in the nineties, didn't talk about these things. We didn't talk about, you know, feeling bad about our body image and then eating our emotions. This is stuff that just didn't come out. This is stuff that people didn't discuss. Uh, even with the advent in the inter of the internet in the late nineties and early two thousands, you just didn't discuss this. You know, people would always be like, hey, careful what you're eating there and stuff like that. And really, you know, do you really need that extra taco at Taco Bell? Stupid crap like that. And even though I was very active in high school and I was a very active child, just constantly, constantly being ridiculed. And um, it, it was super tough um, because I wanted to be straight sized. I wanted to be that you know, I wanted to look like my favorite basketball players. I wanted to look like my favorite actors and athletes. Um, it's something I wanted. Um, and I would exercise and exercise and I'd go out and run and I would just do everything and the scale would be going up because you know, you're a teenager, you're growing and then the scale goes up, but I've done all this work and so I'd eat um, and, and yeah, I just had a very, my relationship with food was very toxic and um, either I saw food as the enemy a lot of the times and food is there for nourishment and, and um, it, it was it was really really not good. So growing up though, you know, you get out of high school, you get into early college years. I, I worked uh, in, in a career in nonprofit. You know, always had people really concerned about my weight. I, I literally have people come sit me down. Hey, you know, I'm really concerned about your weight. You know, and, and it always well-meaning people and I'd be going to the gym and I'd be in and out of the gym trying to every different crash diet I would fast I would starve myself uh, I don't know how many different times I started and stopped Atkins 80-20 um, um, it just so many Weight Watchers um, so many things just straight up starving myself uh, diet pills just to lose the weight. And then a lot of times I would lose weight. I was still struggling with it. I started going to the gym and then I, I really was working out like crazy, going to the gym two times a day, you know, really restricting my food intake. Um, and it, it, I was losing weight, but I wasn't losing weight fast enough. And then I'd have this toxic relationship with food, so I wouldn't eat. And it was just like, I, I, I started taking diet pills because I needed to get down to this weight and I can't get over this hump. And it was just, awful and awful and then I feel bad about it myself I'm like oh just screw it I'm gonna eat and I'd go to Taco Bell or something and scarf down as much food as I could and I feel horrible about it and, and just do other things and and this is stuff as a guy you know I'm, I'm you, you don't you don't talk about especially in the culture I was in we don't talk about it um, when I'd be on these diets and I, I would lose massive amounts of weight people were like oh good for you that's great you're losing the weight that's great doing the work and then you know, when you, you, I, the, the momentum would stop or I, maybe I gain a little bit back, people were like, oh, so you, you're not on your diet anymore? Are you still going to the gym? And you're just like, yeah, I'm still going to the gym. And I'm sorry, it's freaking Christmas. I took a break. Like, it's the holidays. I want a, I want a fruitcake, sorry. And you know, my weight has always been something I've never been able to get under control. I have been crash dieting, up and down dieting, yo-yo dieting. Almost all of my 30s, late 20s, early 30s, like it's just been up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, even up until two years ago, before I started the Hiker Podcast, I started getting into hiking, I was exercising before the pandemic, um, lost a lot of weight, gained much of that back during the pandemic, and um, and it, it, it's, it's just been a, a real 
it's been a real, a real struggle, and it's been tough. And um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about you know how other other things, other aspects that play into this. Um, one, I, I talked about my binge eating. I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder in. 2019, I was going to a therapist dealing with trauma from my past, dealing with you know existential crisis of leaving my career and old belief system, and really we're just getting into some pretty deep stuff through this process. We discovered, you know, a lot of a lot of my trauma and, and, and trauma bonding and how that affected me in the past, and it really had come out that I had a very toxic relationship with food. That I, I saw food as a bad thing. I saw food as something that was. Um, either there to comfort me or it was a horrible thing I was to avoid and I just didn't see food for what it was. Food is food and um, it was there for my nourishment and um, there's no necessarily bad food or clean food or unclean food. That was a big wake up call for me. As a guy, as a, as, as a male, um, no one freaking talks about this. No one talks about that. that I mean, even even for generally, f um, eating disorders are, are taboo. Um, but you know, when you're working in you know a super masculine industry, um, where guys are just trying to be tough and drive big trucks, and rawr, 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 you know, to talk about you know I'm really struggling, you know, with eating my emotions. No one talks about that, but I, I do, and um, I just felt so much shame, and. Um, yeah, it sucked. It really sucked. So there's an the aspect of the binging disorder that's really with trauma, um, you know, receiving mental health services, counseling therapy to help me work through that. It's been great. Um, and just grappling with that and dealing with that has been a journey. And especially with the pandemic, it has definitely been up and down. I do want to talk a little bit too also about the genetics. You know, I, I come from a family with um, a lot of large people. Um, we are, you know, some would say hardy stock. I have a lot of plus size individuals in my family. That's just the genetics that have been passed down to me on both sides of my family. And I can't fault anybody for that. So there, there's a disposition to that. And I say that because I want to get to this next part, which is the toxic fitness bros and, and, and fitness gurus who slide into the DMs and, and comment on things on, on Instagram and on posts and on articles about plus size fashion. Um, which is kind of the main reason why, why I'm doing this video. Um, kind of maybe give you all, you, you, you fitness people, some perspective from someone on the other side who literally just came back from the gym, who before that literally just went on a mile run by the river, um, who's been doing this for a while. So just because somebody is fat plus size does not mean they're unhealthy. Just like if someone is skinny or muscular does not mean they are healthy. Those things are not mutually exclusive at all. Get that through your head, please. Please, 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 please. I go to the gym and have been going to the gym pretty consistently, you know, three to four times a week. There's obviously breaks with the pandemic, obviously hiking anywhere between one and four and five times a week. I do, I'm careful about what I eat. I'm not like a dieting, but I have celiac disease, which so, you know, I, I, I do, I am aware of what I am eating. I cannot, because I have celiac disease, I cannot have gluten, but I don't need to, I, I don't need to justify myself to you. Not paying attention to what I'm eating because I have to pay very close attention to what I eat because if I have something with gluten, um, I get very sick. I get flu-like symptoms for two or three days. So I say all that just to say, I exercise, I'm outdoors. I do, I am, I am aware of what I eat, but I also have an eating disorder. I have a predisposition um, just to being in a bigger body. Um, and I don't need to justify myself to you. I believe in health at every size, that at every size, uh, you can have health, metabolic health. Uh, just because you have a certain BMI does not make you unhealthy. Just because you have a low BMI doesn't make you healthy. Like I said, those things are not mutually exclusive. Which gets me back to Instagram. And so I'm seeing these comments about me. You know, I'm hiking through everything, ding, 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 you know, all that stuff. And it's been fun. And I've had a great time. And I'm getting a lot of comments. And then there are other people who are in the fat and plus size community who are saying, hey, it's great to see a big guy out there. 
you know, you've encouraged me to go out and go for a hike. And then there are really three types of responses I'm seeing. The first one is the belligerent, hey fat A, what are you doing out here? You need to do more than just hike. Oh, you're crossing that bridge on your hike, you're gonna break that bridge. That's just belligerent trolls. And as I'm crossing that bridge, the trolls are under that bridge, you know. Then there's the toxic fitness bros and gurus who are like, hey, they, they slide into your DMs a lot of the times, or they'll make comments like, you know, being fat is never healthy, or it's not okay to be hat, fat, not okay to be hat. You shouldn't be normalizing obesity. This isn't healthy and good for society. They slide into your DMs saying, hey, if you need help with your, with your fitness routine or your health journey, come talk to me. I'd love to help you. And we can, we can document our journey on social media together. And like, And then there's like the well-meaning comments, like, oh, good for you. I'm glad you made it out there. I'm glad you're doing something for yourself. At least you're out there hiking, which are very well-meaning, but very like, I told the story about how once I came from a very difficult, strenuous hike with my son, I came down, ran, ran into somebody who I knew, but they didn't recognize me. Um, and they asked me, how far did you make it up to, the, to this, this butte? And I said, I made it all the way up. It was 3,000 feet of elevation gain. And they kind of looked me over and they still didn't recognize me, which was weird. And they're like, you? Both of you? I'm like, yeah, all the way up? Yeah. Um, it's those kind of comments where they're, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of, there's some underlying stuff there. Now I say all that to say, you know what? It's not helpful. And I go and I hike and I work out and I even am careful about what I eat, not because I want to lose weight. I exercise every day. I'm in the gym, I'm walking, I'm starting to run again. I love running. Uh, it's very therapeutic for me. Um, I hike, I'm in the outdoors, I'm climbing mountains, I'm climbing bluffs, I'm climbing up to the top of plateaus. I'm doing these things. And I'm not trying to lose weight. I haven't stepped on a scale since October. And I don't plan on doing it anytime soon because I'm not doing these things to lose weight. Uh, I, I'm not caring about a number on a scale. I'm not caring, caring about the number on my waistline or on the tag on my shirt. Um, I am doing this for me, to be the best version of me I can, to have mental health, metabolic health, and to feel good. When I leave the gym, after I've been on the stair stepper for 40 minutes, and then I did an ab workout to strengthen my core so I can get up table rock faster next week than I did last week, because it's just a personal challenge I'm putting for myself, I feel good and it's great. Um, and I'm not gonna get into that trap of doing that and then running home and getting on the scale, taking off all my clothes, you know, and not drinking any water during my workout because the water is, though I need it, is going to get my weight up, so I want my weight to be down as much as I possibly can. I'm not playing those games anymore. I'm not doing the dieting crap anymore. And I think, too, we're seeing a revolution in the outdoor um, industry and in the fashion industry regarding plus size fashion and acceptance, because fat phobia is a real thing um, in the outdoor industry, in the fashion industry. Um, here's the deal. You're not a fashion industry, apparel industry, you're not above our fat dollars. You're not. And I am loyal to companies like Columbia because when I needed them, I needed apparel to go out and climb up a plateau or backpack overnight, apparel to keep me safe and warm so when my trekking pole failed that couldn't support me and I had to get a puffy on because the sun was about to set and I was gonna get hypothermia, Columbia had a puffy for me that would fit me and kept me warm so I can get back to my car at the trailhead safe. And here's the deal, fashion industry, you're not above our fat dollars and we'll reciprocate. And if you're out there and you're a, a trainer or whatever, that's great. Um, your criticism isn't welcome. It's not. Um, your unsolicited advice is not welcome. It's all out there. We have Google. We know. Um, you don't know what we've been through. You don't know what I've been through. 
So stop putting your expectations on me and other fat and plus size individuals. Um, because I am healthy and I'm doing everything I can for my mental, metabolic, physical health. And uh, yeah, and the outdoors has given me that and I'm so thankful for it. And hiking has given me that and the plus size and fat you know, community, whether it's you know, the nerd and, and fandom community, the apparel and fashion community, the hiking outdoor and plus size community has encouraged me. And, um, and if you're straight sized, the best thing you can do for your fat and plus size friends is just be there for them and support them and, and support them in their decisions and uh, be someone they can lean on. So with that guys, thanks for watching this whole thing. I know this is a bit of a rant. Um, follow me on Andy Films and Hikes. It'll be down here somewhere. Um, next week, I will have the gear video. It will be up, I promise you. I am changing the upload schedule. New videos will go up on this channel on Thursdays. If you are a Patreon supporter of mine, they will go up on Wednesdays. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching the whole thing. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.